like to go across to welcome the next lecture on our theme, ladies and gentlemen, which is, I remind you, has the need for a uniform civil code become an imperative today? Our next lecture is by Justice Kurian Joseph. With a legal career spanning over four decades, he has literally seen it all. A former judge of the Supreme Court of India, previously served as Chief Justice of Himachal Pradesh High Court. And as a judge in the Kerala High Court, he has authored over 1,000 judgments and orders during his tenure as a Supreme Court judge, which is a record-breaking feat. And perhaps the most significant judgment to mention on this occasion is that rhythm on, on, on triple talaq rhythm. Yes. In fact, I can see Justice Kurian Joseph's trademark smile on his face, which we were so used to seeing in the courts. Sir, as we mm -hmm. welcome you, you were a part of the majority that deemed the practice unconstitutional in the landmark Shaira Banu versus Union of India case. We as women in the Supreme Court at that time rejoiced at your words when you said triple talaq is against the tenets of the Holy Quran and violates the Shariat. Absolutely. So uh, I don't think we must take more time. Uh, we are all very keenly looking forward to your address, Justice Kurian Joseph. Your vast legal knowledge guarantees that this lecture, in the memory of uh, the one and only Ram Jethpalani, is all going to be very illuminating for the legal fraternity and those outside it. So, on behalf of Sri Mahesh Jethpalani, who is with me here today, all our colleagues, it is my pleasure to welcome you, sir, to the Ram Jethpalani Memorial Lecture Series. Over to you. Uh, Justice Corey and Joseph. Thank you, Mr. Arnab, and thank you, Ritu, for the kind words uh, spoken of me. I still remember the day when this uh, triple talaq judgment was pronounced. After the uh, minority judgment was read out, people were running around and saying that it has been upheld. But the majority judgment, in fact, I ordered the leading judgment. Uh, when that was pronounced, Chief Justice said, wait, wait, we have to see what others also have to say. Well, it's an absolute uh, pressure on my side to share a stage with uh, our Honorable Vice President, uh, His Excellency, Mr. Jack Dikkan Dankar, and also our, the Honorable Governor of uh, Kerala. And uh, let me pay my tribute to Mr. Uh, Jatmalani first. Uh, let me share something very personal. His last argument was in my court. When he finished his arguments, he said, today I'm laying down my um, what you call professional career as a lawyer. This is my last argument in my court. So I always cherish that day. Uh, the bench headed by me, he said, uh, this is my last argument in the court. So I'm not, not going to appear in any court. So that is something very, very exclusively uh, personal to me. I always cherish those words. So, and he, I loved him. And that is one reason, apart from, of course, my personal relationship with Mr. Mahesh, that brought me here to be part of this uh, lecture series. I always held Mr. Jatmani in very high esteem. He was one lawyer who was uh, approachable to anybody. And he was one lawyer who had never refused a brief of anybody. And who is one lawyer in India who has argued on all aspects of uh, non-legal uh, jurisprudence as of now. Uh, these uh, three, four points I would like to remember about him before I start my lecture. Well, the topic today is, has the need for uniform civil code become imperative uh, in India today? My first question is, is it the imperative need for India today? Is that what is uh, the, the imperative need for India today? Is that what is uh, standing against the growth of India or growth of nationalism or national integration? These are my personal observations. I'm not representing anybody or any community, but my personal observations on uh, looking at the scenario in India, I feel that there are more, more important aspects which needs countries' attention today and even the Supreme Court of India also because this Article 44 on Uniform Civil Code comes uh, under the directive principles. Directive principles are meant for the state to make laws. The Constitution says it's not for a court to take the lead. The Constitution clearly says uh, 
it's under the duty of the state to apply these principles in making laws. So therefore, uh, uh, this is something to um, gain the attention of uh, different platforms. Uh, this is my uh, personal observation on what's happening. To me, in the directive principles, because we have constituted ourselves into a sovereign socialist democratic sector republic of India. Are we in a position still after 75 years to say that sovereign, yes, republic, yes, but as far as democratic, socialist, and secular republic is concerned, have we been able to, as the Honorable Governor pointed out, been able to enjoy this justice, which is social, economic, and political, liberty of thought, expression, faith, belief, and worship, equality of status and opportunity, and promotion of dig uh, fraternity, assuring the dignity of individual. Are these constitutional values are comfortably available for experiencing and enjoying for the ordinary citizen of this country? Is it the lack of his uniform civil code that stands for an ordinary citizen of this country that you know, the, the baker, butcher, that ordinary man of this country to experience that I am an important citizen of this country. I live in a democratic country where I have a space and I have a voice. And my views are respected, even if it is counter mediterranean even if uh, it, is, uh, uh, it is my own views. Well, in directive principles also, have we attained, uh, have we made serious attempts on many of these aspects? Because this is under Article 44, Uniform Civil Code. The endeavor, the states shall make endeavor to make us uniform. But prior to that, there are several things which a state should uh, engage its attention. For example, 38, Article 38. The state shall strive to promote the welfare of the people by securing and protecting as effectively as it may a social order in which justice, social, economic, political shall inform all the institutions of national life. Is it available? Have we been able to attain that? The state shall in particular strive to minimize the inequalities of income and endeavor to eliminate inequalities in states' facilities and opportunities not only amongst individuals, but also amongst groups of, in, of people residing in different areas or engaged in different occasions. Have been able to attend that? The state shall, in particular, direct the policy towards securing that citizens, men and women, equally have the right to an adequate means to livelihood. Ownership and control of a material resource of the community are so distributed as best to subserve common good. Operation of economic systems system does not result in the concentration of wealth and means of production to the common detriment. Is that the concentration of wealth issue being addressed by this country on the real principles of uh, socialism, on equitable distribution of wealth, equal pay for equal work, health and strength of workers, men and women, and the tender age of children are not abused and that citizens are not forced by economic necessity to enter avocations unsuited to their age or strength. Have we been able to address this? Let's look at the reality, what's happening about the, the, the children. We had recently uh, 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 a conference where uh, we were thinking about the, the fate of children here who have been abused. And uh, who, who still see, if we just look around Delhi, I've been part of an organization where we were, you have been trying to give an informal education to uh, the, the children on the street. A boy of 17, when we taught him to write in Hindi his name, he was so excited. And I could see going around the city by probably by distributing food, etc. in the Corona times, even now also sometimes. There are thousands of children on the streets. Forget about those working in uh, uh, factories or hotels or etc. So have you been able to address this issue? That children are given opportunities and facilities to develop in a healthy manner. 
and in conditions of freedom and dignity and that childhood and youth are protected against exploitation and against moral and material abandonment then comes equal justice right to work right to education just and humane conditions living wage for workers and then comes independence of judiciary that also is uh, one of the uh, articles which govern our uh, uni um, govern our direct which are which is in the uni uh, in the in the directive principles of state policy so is it the hour or is it the time when we have to address several other concerns of people of their insecurity of their uh, uh, the dignity to live as free citizens of a country i don't mean any community forget about uh, the 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 feeling or apprehension of the people that the uniform civil code will uh, will, will definitely affect uh, the religious freedom yes it is one of the concerns because article 25 provides for religious freedom also even among hindus i was just looking at the hindu marriage act how been able to make it uniform among the several sections of hindus so to me i would say let us reform our own personal laws so as to make it a, a law which is in conformity with the constitutional dreams and which will serve the constitutional values let us address that issue first reform our personal laws in all personal laws whether it is for majority community or minority communities and make it constitutional by appropriate uh, reforms or appropriate amendments thereafter let us think about this subject then it will be easier for it and particularly given the times i would say there are several other major concerns for the country to address now and uh, the the let's not think about a situation where the uniformity is what is required for unity particularly for india it is not the uniformity what is required for unity what is required for unity is actually the the the, the feeling of security that i am a free citizen of this country irrespective of caste color creed religion language gender or place of birth i have my space and i have my voice no religion no law ever should interfere into my dignity as a human being as a citizen of this country so let us infuse this confidence in the minds of everybody whether majority or minority this particular party that particular party no every citizen of this country has equal access to justice and is in a position to enjoy the freedom that democracy gives that space that democracy assures that voice that is the core uh, of um, democracy we thought which if you think of uh, this sort of uh, discussions uh, i do not think that we will be able to make india a great india if you want to make it india a great india let's have a, a, an india where its citizens are in a position to enjoy this liberty of thought expression faith belief and worship which is uh, to whom justice social economic and political are available dignity of the person irrespective of gender is protected this main concern is about uh, the the dignity to the women yes is very important but let us reform our personal laws whereby uh, just as uh, it was said in about the, the triple talaq where in our own personal laws this is uh, this is not actually addressed if not respected so let us address those aspects uh, those issues which are against our constitutional dreams or constitutional values of uh, uh, constitutional morality i must say of dignity equality and liberty of women uh, by reforming the personal laws and thereafter let us uh, think of this situation so to me i would say this is not the time for such a discussion and this is not the imperative need for the country as of now thank you jai hind well thank you thank you justice uh, korean joseph for your for your for very you know very clear words on the subject and just in summary responding to just a couple of the points i want to summarize you are focused greatly on the issue of timing 
at the at the large introductory part and towards the end of your your lecture as well and you've you've essentially said that unless other aspects of indian society uh, other other areas of inequality are dealt with this is not the most imperative time so you've spent a substantial time on the word imperative and i think that will spark a new debate on you've also made the point on national integration whether it would really help the country well in past cases before the supreme court i remember justice joseph the john valamotum case 2003 the court had said that the common civil code will quote unquote help the cause of national integration by removing all contradictions